And just as Dr. Joy talked about earlier, he said to wipe out every man, woman, woman and, and child. child. Now, if we had a loving God, and unless you understood that this is a separate lineage and that this lineage was evil and wicked and did all kind of abominable acts, uh, they drank blood, ate flesh, all kind of different things, that would not make sense. So it's also important to understand this to unlock the secret of why Noah, when he sent the spies into the land, they came back with an evil account and they said, we can't. Right, no, Moses. Yeah, Moses. Moses. Yes, yes. When Moses sent the spies into the land and they came back with an evil report and there's, they said, we cannot go against these people. These people will eat us. That's right. They said they were huge and they were scared to death of them right. because they were absolutely humongous. And of course, Moses was told by God not to intermingle with them, not to have any kind of relations with them, not to allow the people to go near them. And like you say, if they encountered them, to kill them. Right. Every one of them, not to let any of them out of there. And I think that's where I've had a lot of people say, well, if we have a loving God, how could a loving God slaughter children? Right. Well, this answers why exactly. the loving God was willing to right. do that. Right. Uh, and, and, it, and it really helps you come to a very, very un a greater understanding that at the end of time, when you look at the book of Revelation, where they say, well, he comes as a lamb, but then he also comes as a, as a lion, that there is a judgment. And I think, Absolutely. again, we're seeing the parallel in the beginning that he had judgment against those uh, individuals. And at the end of time, he is a loving God, but, you know, he's given us this opportunity. If we're not willing to take it, then he's going to bring judgment. And he did that when, when we see this with Moses and, and, and with what happened with the tribulation as far as the abom uh, abominations that were going on prior to the flood. And he brought about the flood. He Absolutely. was getting rid of those kinds Absolutely. of things. It was after to get rid of what those fallen angels had done with those giants. They were destroying the earth. They were mixing with biogenetics because they were, you know, if you look back at some of the temples from the Egyptians, you've got human bodies with heads of all kinds of beings and things like that. And people said a long time ago, well, that was just mythological. But today, with our biogenetics, right. we Cloning. can take and we can put a head of whatever. I mean, we've got people, we've got people putting human genes. They just made and, a glow-in-the-dark dog. That's right. Genetics, well, even humans with, uh, in, in pigs, and humans in, in uh, cells that are within monkeys and right. things like that. So you're already seeing that the manifestation of, of mixing. And, and I think that um, this is only serves to prove that the end of time will be like the days of Noah, and we are living in them. Absolutely. And I have another quote. I've got quotes for all of what Dr. Joyce says because the Bible confirms what we're trying to tell everyone. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seat therein. And in that day thou shall no more be the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So he's talking about a judgment. The Canaanites will not have part in the, in the salvation. Right. Zechariah 14.21. Um, I wanted to also we'll go into talking about the flood too because I have... Another quote that most people have not heard about is from Baruch chapter 310. And this will equate why the flood came. Because we know that the Lord brought the flood upon the earth to wipe out this abominable That's seed right. line about these giants. And this is the only particular scripture you're going to find anywhere that directly links the giants with the flood. And it says this, And the angel said to me, Rightly you ask me, when God made the flood upon the earth, he drowned every firstling, and he destroyed 104,000 giants. And the water rose above the mountains, 20 cubits above the mountains, and the waters entered into the garden, bringing out one shoot from the vine as God withdrew the waters. That's from the Slavonic book of Baruch, chapter 310. Here's the Greek version of the same text, Baruch chapter 4. And the angel said, Rightly you ask, when God caused the flood over the earth, and destroyed all flesh and 409,000 giants. And the water rose over the heights, 15 cubits. The water entered paradise and killed every flower, but it removed the sprig of the vine completely and brought it outside. Dr. Joy, I want to also, since we, I know we're running out of time, but I want to touch upon modern day demons and how this ties into 
the alien presence that is here upon this planet. Well, I think what we're seeing really again goes back to what was happening at the end of you know the end of days before the flood, and that is that mixing was absolutely bringing about these giants. And when those giants died, they produced demonic entities because they were in a fallen state. In other words, once they passed on, the flesh went back to dust because it was a human flesh. But at the same time, because the fallen angel was a father, it could not re-manifest itself and, and be in a safe state. Right, or no salvation. And, and of course, in my book Enoch, I mean in my book Eden, I, in looking mm -hmm. at the things that happened with Enoch and talking about the watchers and about them coming upon the daughters of man, that they were also saying that they were having children and that those children were from the watchers and those were fallen individuals. Right. Well, in the book of uh, Epic of Gilgamesh, that documentation is about a particular giant yeah, who was absolutely looking for a way to keep flesh alive. Yes. The reason he wanted his flesh to stay alive is because he wanted to be able to manifest in a material world forever without having to walk without a body. Yeah, absolutely, immortality. And once the flood happened, it killed all the bodies. Then, of course, those demonic beings, they had no bodies to right, inhabit. Right. So as, as mankind returned back to a state of fallenness, exactly. then that allowed those demons to start penetrating humanity again. Yes. And we know when Jesus was uh, uh, in his first ministerial role, really, was to, to remove demons. Exactly. That was his first absolute manifestation of a, a really a miracle, was that he drove out these demons. And what I find interesting is that he spoke to the demon, the demons spoke back to him, yes. and he drove them out. And he yes. Specifically, and they knew him by name. Yes, and they also said to Jesus, why have you come before the time? Before the time, exactly. So they know that he Judgment had come for a reason, yes. that he was going to do something, but that he was coming again right. to get rid of them forever. Right. Judgment. And so they knew it wasn't the time for him to be there to get rid of them forever, but yet that he could run them out and do whatever he wanted to get the person, or uh, get them to leave a human being body. So I think that uh, we you have to look at the fact that demons are real. They do exist. If you don't believe that, then you can't believe the Bible because it right. says specifically, Jesus said, even to his disciples, you may have to fast. In other words, you have to be so close to God right. and you can only use my name. In other words, you can't say, demon, get out in Buddha's name or get, exactly. you know, demon, get out in Joy's name. You've got to say, demon, remove thyself in the name of Jesus. So the only thing that will allow a demon to leave a human being that has manifested itself and possessed is the name of Jesus. It's not an easy thing to do because we can look at Malachi Martin's total accounts that he has, huge case studies of people who were priests who attempted to remove these demons and they were not really checked up themselves right, with God. Right. And those demons came out of those individuals and jumped on them. And some of those priests died. Well, if they have the power to do this, it's not a being that's just easy to deal with. These things have major powers. And Absolutely. it specifically tells us that Satan has power over the air and he has manifestation over a lot of things. If that's the case, then that is why only a demon can be removed by the name of Jesus. Absolutely. And the Bible tells us you've got to put on the whole armor of God. You've got to trust in Him totally, or you cannot remove that demon, even in Jesus' name. If you're not really fasted and prayed and believing, the whole you armor can't, of God. That's right. You can't do it either. So, in looking at the manifestations of what we're now calling alien abductions, and people saying they're being visited by aliens during the night, these little great beings or whatever, I find it interesting that the only thing that would allow those manifestations to stop is when that person cries out the name, the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. And if it doesn't work, that means that they are not really, truly Rooted. believing. Absolutely. And that's no different than what was told to the disciple. You've got to believe it, fast it, pray it, and call it for it to work for you. Absolutely. And I would ask the listening audience to check out the work of Byron LeBeau and Joe Jordan and Guy Malone uh, at Cursed Net uh, because they are on the forefront of this issue. And for some reason, for some reason, the UFO community is trying to keep hidden the fact that you can use the name of Yahushua Savior Messiah, Jesus Christ, to banish demons out of your life.